Well, hey guys, the summer months are upon us. That means we're likely to be getting hot and sweaty soon. And for many people, they are prone to breakouts on the chest and other body sites in the summer months. Now, there are a lot of things that look like acne breakouts, but are entirely different. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about a skin condition that mimics acne on the chest. So keep watching so you learn something. If you are new here, welcome, by the way. My name is Andrea. I am a board certified dermatologist. If you are at all interested in skincare, definitely subscribe and hit the bell notification that alerts you when my videos go live. If you prefer shorter form content, consider following me over on TikTok or Instagram. I'm relatively consistent on those platforms as well. Okay, what is this acne mimicker that you speak of? It is a condition called eruptive vellus hair cysts. What the heck? Vellus hairs are those little tiny blonde baby hairs that you'll see on your face, your chest, your arms, your legs. They differ from terminal hairs, which are long, pigmented, coarse, and occur on your scalp as part of your scalp hair, the beard area, the underarms, and in the pubic area. Vellus hairs are kind of referred to as peach fuzz. Just like terminal hairs, the little vellus hairs, they exist in a follicle. That follicle can become irritated, dilate, and form a little cyst. Therefore, you can develop something called vellus hair cysts, and they tend to erupt all at once, and often they have a predilection for occurring on the chest, but they can also occur on the arms, the legs. They can occur in the vulva and women. Rarely, they can happen on the face. They kind of look a little bit like acne. Who gets these? It's actually more common in children and teenagers, but adults can get this as well. Why do people get these? Well, the cause is not entirely understood, but it's thought that something causes a blockage of the vellus hair follicle, and that blockage ends up causing the follicle to dilate and to kind of fill up with vellus hairs, and therefore you get a little cyst. But why they occur? It's not entirely understood. They're often sporadic, just randomly out of the blue, boom. Now, they can often occur in families in a familial pattern, suggesting perhaps an underlying genetic predisposition. It's thought that there may be a mutation that you can inherit in genes that encode different keratin proteins that make you more at risk for developing these. But long story short, we don't know why people get them. But they certainly do look an awful lot like acne, especially to the untrained eye. They appear as small, red to brown, smooth little bumps, almost looks like a closed comedone to the untrained eye, AKA a whitehead, or just like an acne pimple coming up. When it happens on the chest, they tend to localize mostly over the sternum, but they also can happen on your arms and your legs and on the vulva. You can have just a few or numerous hundreds of them. That can be pretty alarming to wake up one day and be covered in little bumps all over your chest, ranging anywhere from two to three millimeters in diameter. For the most part, they are smooth, but sometimes they can be scaly, and sometimes the center of the little bump can umbilicate or dent inward. They rarely are symptomatic, meaning they don't cause you any discomfort, but in some cases they can be itchy, and rarely they can be scaly or crusty or kind of flaky. In contrast to an acne breakout on the chest, eruptive vellus hair cysts, they all come out all at once as opposed to acne. You tend to have pimples and different stages of development. Eruptive vellus hair cysts are pretty monomorphic, meaning they are more or less all the same in terms of how they appear. How do you know that you're dealing with these though? The best way, of course, is to see a board certified dermatologist. For a dermatologist, it's a pretty straightforward diagnosis based on the appearance, the history, and in some cases we can take a skin biopsy, which under the microscope we see that there is a little cyst filled with vellus hairs, those little baby hairs. The good news about vellus hair cysts is that they uh, don't require any treatment aside from if you want them treated because you're bothered by their appearance cosmetically. Uh, the other good thing about vellus hair cysts is that unlike acne, they do not go on to scar. That is one of the reasons we treat acne aggressively and early. It's an attempt to not only clear up the acne, but to prevent it from going on to scar. With eruptive vellus hair cysts, they do not scar. They're very superficial, meaning up high, and they don't damage the dermis. They tend to not 
incite any kind of inflammation into the skin. That's probably why they don't itch, probably why they don't cause discomfort. While these don't require treatment, you can imagine that most people want to do something about them because being covered in hundreds of little red bumps it's not everybody's cup of tea. Most people want to do something. So what treatments are available? Well, interestingly enough, in about 25% of cases in children, they just spontaneously go away. Isn't that something? I mean, a lot of times with the skin, that is often the case. Some, many things in the skin, they just go away on their own. In children especially, these tend to just spontaneously resolve. So it it's, wouldn't be uncommon, as a matter of fact, for people to develop these make an appointment to see a dermatologist, there's a wait time, and by the time a child gets in to see the dermatologist, these have resolved, but the parents are not sure what it was, they're worried it's gonna come back, they think it may have been acne, especially if it's a very young child, they're like, why, is, why did this happen? You can see how it becomes a very confusing picture. Fortunately, once they resolve, for the most part, they never come back again. But this is not the path that everyone's vellus hair cysts go on. Many people deal with them for a long time and they don't spontaneously resolve. Topically, meaning things that you put on the skin, there are a variety of ingredients that are referred to as keratolytics that can help in exfoliating the skin and helping to kind of clear out uh, the clogged follicle and help them to clear up faster. One of my favorite inexpensive ingredients and in skincare products that I, in my opinion is underrated is urea. Urea creams are often used for the treatment of vellus hair cysts. Urea helps to soften and exfoliate dry, built up, heaped up skin cells. So it helps in clearing out these bumps. It is naturally already present in your skin as part of your natural moisturizing factor. And it can be found in a variety of products. Cetaphil makes a great urea moisturizer, their rough and bumpy um, lotion with 20% urea. So if you're dealing with these, that would be a fantastic product to apply. It can help in accelerating the clearance of these bumps. Alternatively, you could use other keratolytic ingredients like 12% lactic acid, which is found in amlactin lotion that you can buy. You can buy a big bottle of it at Costco, um, or you can buy a smaller bottle of it at the drugstore. It's relatively inexpensive and it works equally as well. I mean, it's the similar mechanism of action of dissolving the keratin and helping to kind of exfoliate that little cyst and make it clear out and go away faster. Alternatively, salicylic acid is another effective treatment. You know, CeraVe has a salicylic acid lotion and for rough and bumpy skin, that would be a fantastic choice. So in the description box, I will link some of these keratolytic moisturizing body creams. Then we have prescription retinoids, tretinoin or tazeratine or over-the-counter differin, which you don't need a prescription for here in the States, likewise can help in clearing up these little bumps. They help because retinoids help kind of normalize skin cell turnover, kind of help normalize that little follicle and the overlying skin, helping to clear out the bump faster. Which is interesting, you know, a lot of people may go out and buy Differin gel thinking that they have acne and self-treat with it and it either spontaneously resolves or the Differin, you know, helps because it does help these eruptive vellus hair cysts. And in the person's mind, they think they have acne, but in reality, they had eruptive vellus hair cysts. So, you know, the person thinks, God, I had this acne breakout on my chest. And, you know, after a while, it eventually went away. I used Differin and it worked well. So this is, as a side note, this is an example of why personal anecdotes are not always the full picture of things because people often don't even know what they're dealing with. So take that with a grain of salt. All that to say, yeah, topical retinoids certainly can help. In rare cases, some people might even elect to be put on an oral retinoid, namely isotretinoin, which is FDA approved for the treatment of acne, but used off label, it can also help these. It's interesting, you know, a lot of what ends up helping these go away faster is in reality acne treatments uh, because they help to normalize skin cell turnover and just kind of help with skin cell behavior and clearance of these bumps.
But to be clear, they are entirely different in their nature and how they form and what they're made of than acne. And unlike acne, they do not go on to scar. If they're really, really stubborn, they can be removed with an excision. There's a tool called a curette that we can use to clear them out. Cryotherapy, which uses liquid nitrogen in that freezing gun, can also be used to remove these, as well as uh, laser-based destructive lasers like CO2 laser. Unfortunately, these procedures like excision, curatage, cryotherapy, CO2 laser, they do come with a risk of scarring. So it's a discussion to have with the patient, like how much does having this bump bother you as opposed to possibly trading it off for a scar. That is definitely something to, to think about. But the topical creams, they don't lead to scarring. These treatments can likewise be used for eruptive vellus hair cysts on the arms, the legs, even the face. However, if you have eruptive vellus hair cysts on the vulva, that's a very sensitive area and a lot of these topicals can end up being just too irritating. So on the vulva, some patients may prefer to have like CO2 laser treatment to remove them for cosmetic purposes. Because this is a cyst, whatever you do, you don't wanna squeeze it. A lot of people think if they have some kind of cyst like this, that if they just squeeze it, the contents will come out and then it'll go away. But unfortunately, it doesn't work that way with cysts. Uh, because they will just fill back up again and return. And if you squeeze and manipulate or try and use an extractor on these, what ends up happening is that you get a lot of inflammation around the cyst that can lead to scarring. It can cause hyperpigmentation or hypopigmentation, meaning loss of color in the skin. That can end up being disfiguring. So don't squeeze or manipulate or try and extract these. That can lead to harm, as well as the risk of skin infections. All right, so that's eruptive vellus hair cysts, something that many people might mistake for acne, but is not acne. Most often happens on the chest, over the sternum, but can happen on the arms, the legs, the vulva, and rarely on the face. What else might look like eruptive vellus hair cysts and or acne, but is entirely different. Here are a few other common skin conditions, or relatively common skin conditions, I should say, that could mimic acne and or eruptive vellus hair cysts. Uh, something called milia, which are another type of little cyst, not with the vellus hairs, but they are another type of little cyst. Don't tend to be as uh, numerous as eruptive vellus hair cysts, although rarely that can happen. Milia can occur spontaneously and resolve spontaneously. I have videos, by the way, on milia and treatments for milia, so definitely check those out. Then you also have keratosis pilaris, rough and bumpy skin. This often, likewise, happens on the arms, it happens on the legs, and it can happen on the chest. It's a dry skin condition. There's no cyst with keratosis pilaris, but you do have little rough bumps uh, of dry skin. Basically, the hair follicle builds up dry skin, so you get these little rough bumps. It, similar ingredients, keratolytics, are used to treat keratosis pilaris. So the urea creams, the salicylic acid cream, the, the, lac, uh, the amlactin, uh, can definitely help keratosis pilaris. So it may be another one of those things where you think you have KP, keratosis pilaris, you self-treat with these things, it improves, and you think, oh my goodness, I was treating my KP. But in reality, you could have had eruptive vellus hair cysts, possibly. Uh, there is something called perforating folliculitis. It's not very common, uh, more often seen in people who have renal failure. That can kind of look like eruptive vellus hair cysts. There are another type of kind of eruptive cysts that are more uh, cysts of the oil gland called steatocystomas. They look similar, but their underlying nature is a bit different. They're oil gland cysts and they have kind of oily contents within them. Then there is this skin lesion called a syringoma. I have a video all about syringomas. If you've ever been diagnosed with one and you want more information, check that video out. I explain what they are and what the treatment options for them are. But if you watch that video or if you know anything about them, they can occur pretty much anywhere on the body, but they often can happen on the chest. You can get multiple of them. They also can happen on the vulva. As a matter of fact, they have been reported 
to occur on the vulva after waxing um, in some people, uh, bikini wax. But uh, yeah, they can look like eruptive vellus hair cysts. But in the case of syringoma, there's no cyst and there's nothing to do with vellus hair. Then there are these little bumps that commonly happen in children but also can happen in adults due to a little viral infection uh, called molluscum contagiosum. And if you have ever had these, or, or if you have a child, because they are very common in children who has or has had molluscum, you know how annoying they can be to deal with. They're basically these firm dome shaped little bumps that happen because this little virus gets into like cracks in the skin, causes this bump, similar to how a wart might form, but a totally different virus and a totally different bump. And those bumps can become inflamed as the immune system tries to clear out the bump. And uh, as that happens, the child or the individual scratches, picks, they can spread that little molluscum to neighboring skin. You get more of these bumps and more of these bumps. And eventually the immune system takes care of these bumps and they go away, but it can be a very long drawn out process. There are treatments that we can do in office that make them go away faster faster, but doesn't prevent you from getting more in neighboring areas. I mean, it's just, it is, it's like the her, it's like the herpes bots I talked about in yesterday's video. Honestly, molluscum, because you tackle a few of them and then boom, more of them appear in neighboring areas. So they can be a nuisance. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have ever dealt with molluscum. They are, they are not pleasant. As I mentioned, eruptive vellus hair cysts, sometimes they can umbilicate, meaning dimple in in the center. And that is a feature of molluscum as well. So you can see how they kind of overlap in, in their appearance or they might overlap in their appearance. All right, you guys, so this is a skin problem that someone might mistake as an acne breakout on the chest, but is not acne. Me. totally different thing going on and it involves the vellus hair follicle and it's these little cysts it's not acne it's totally different the treatments though some of them overlap some of them end up being the same topical retinoids topical keratolytics um, but the the good thing is that that's this doesn't go on to scar unless you know you pick at it or manipulate it and this uh, can just spontaneously go away. More often that's gonna be the case in young children, but adults it could spontaneously resolve as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Now on the end slate, I'm going to put a recent video I did talking about different types of bumps on the face. So check that one out. But if you like this, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.